around here at the Royal Victoria Dock with the planes buzzing in low over the buildings coming in at the city airport. It really reminds me of the walk I did for chapter two of my book, This Other London, where I walked from Leytonstone down to Beckton. And there was a point where I stood upon the Sir Steve Redgrave Bridge and watched the planes pinging down over my head coming into land. So here's um, some footage I shot on that walk. I didn't really talk much as I was filming. I was just really doing it for a record to use the footage to write from. And I did that walk in the summer of 2012, just before the London Olympics, which already, although that's only, what, coming up five years ago, feels like another London. You could say, this other London. Beckton was lodged in a dusty corner of my brain, as the unlikely location of Stanley Kubrick's Vietnam War movie, Full Metal Jacket. The film had caught my eye after seeing a short item on TV about this mad American director who was transforming a disused gasworks in East London into the killing fields of Vietnam. Thousands of palm trees had been imported and planted in the Thameside marshes to recreate the landscape of Southeast Asia at Beckton. I had to go to Beckton to see what I could find of Kubrick's Beck Fu, as it came to be known to the crew. I set out on foot late morning one Friday in a fine mist of rain. Groups of rustic informants are sunning themselves on the benches outside West Ham Church. The foundations of this church date back to the Saxon era, the main body being rebuilt by the Norman Baron William de Montfichet in the 1180s. When the eyes of the world fell on the running and jumping on Stratford marshes, I doubt many cast their gaze towards this building with a heritage older than Westminster Abbey. It sits beneath the shade of the lime, yew and oak trees, not a tourist in sight. Stratford Abbey. The Abbey of Stratford Langthorne put the area on the map in the Middle Ages in the way that Westfield Stratford City is aiming to do today. The Cistercian monks of the Abbey were known for their green fingers. The name Langthorne was taken from the hedges of long thorns that surrounded their gardens on this site. The present day Abbey Gardens carry on the work of the monks encouraging local people to use the open access harvest garden to grow fruit, vegetables and herbs in rows of raised beds. Just inside the gate are the brick and flint foundations of a small building or room that would have been part of the medieval abbey. Around it grow lavender, wild geraniums, cabbages, lettuce and spring onions. An old signal box finds new life as a tool shed and a wind turbine provides whatever power is needed. I think the monks would approve. Before the Cistercians and their impressive abbey, Old Ham was divided into two manors. There is a map of the area at ye time of Edward ye Confessor. I'd guess from the spelling that the map was Victorian, those yees speak of a longing to connect with the halcyon past. It shows the manor of Aylston with his eight hides of arable and 60 acres of meadow in West Ham. On the other side of Ham Creek is the manor of Lurid with only one hide of arable and 50 acres of meadow. The Greenway is a great vantage point from which to take in the course of Alfred the Great's Channel Sea River. It's believed that the ingenious Alfred cut a series of channels to drain water from the River Lee, stranding a hostile Viking fleet that had moored further along the valley. I've been on the move now for three hours and still have some distance to go on my loopy route to Beck Fu. I want to follow the journey the monks of Stratford Abbey took after the dissolution of the monasteries in the 16th century when they retired to a mansion in plaster. This would have been a traumatic event for the monks, kicked out of their home by Henry VIII once he assumed the role of supreme head of the church in England after his split from Rome. Although there's nothing to suggest the monks of Stratford were wholly guilty of the crimes levelled at monasteries and abbeys, but to some extent theirs was a walk of shame from the wealth of their abbey to the relative modesty of the plaster retreat.
when I made my way up the steps of the great temple complex at Borobudur in Java, one of the many candidates for the eighth wonder of the world, I was a person who had just seen too many temples. My flabber had been ghasted. That was until I sloped along this section of the Woolwich Manor Way. Atlantis Avenue leads me from the UFO pumping station into Armada Way and onto the set of Full Metal Jacket. Fittingly, the Beckton shot part of the film opens to a soundtrack of Nancy Sinatra's These Boots Were Made For Walking. It's an expansive landscape of long swaying grasses adorned with pylons. There's not a soul around. The remote London of Thomas Burke who passed through here in 1921, walking from Barking to Cyprus. The chain link fencing around the energy plant recalls the perimeter fence of the landing strip as a Westland helicopter, repainted US Marine Green, comes into land. I see the formation of M41 tanks and the Marines working their way across the misty East Ham level as they come under fire from the old gasworks buildings. Armada Way snakes through to the Galleons Reach shopping complex that appears more stranded than Kubrick's unit of shell-shocked recruits with their thousand-yard stairs. From comparing various old A to Zs and my greater London Atlas, this stands over the site of the buildings that feature in the film. The squad at the heart of the film gets lost near Tesco and comes under fire from a sniper that I'd place somewhere between WH Smith and Sports Direct. As Matthew Modine's troops snaked around the back of the Huey Beckton building, harbouring the markswoman, eyes slide round the back of Tesco and rest on the grass beneath the pylons, where rabbits frolic in the evening sun. I go to head off towards the river roading, but am scythed down as if a Viet Cong sniper had been left behind to continue the fight. My left knee cramps up and I stagger into the fence around the sewage works. There's no point radioing for a chopper to airlift me out. I'll have to haul this useless lump of flesh clear of the war zone via the service road. The Marines make their way across this same rough ground of Thameside marshes drained by the Romans. Matthew Modine's character, Joker, narrates the closing lines. We hump down to the Perfume River to set down for the night. It had been my intention to set down for the night by the river roading, but I'd never make it. Instead of humping down to the Perfume River, I hobble to the Docklands Light Railway and home to Leytonstone.